Welcome to the True Crime Lounge. Oh, I felt like a spy moment there for a minute. Um, anyway, welcome to the True Crime Lounge. And here we talk murder in all forms of crime. I do have a Patreon that you can go and support as support me as well. I also have a merch shop that you can start, you can check out as well. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, now I got all that out of the way. Why don't we dive into today's episode, shall we? A few disclosures. One, I do have a speech impediment, which I've had since I was a kid. Number two, this is a pre-recorded episode since I am in school and I work multiple jobs. I'm also coming off a double, so I am very tired right now. But I'm trying to get this out, so. And number three, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Just to add up, I apologize in advance. Today, we are going to start a mini series called Thanksgiving Murders. That we will be released a week of Thanksgiving. And if you are a member of my Patreon, this episode will be on there. On the first episode of the mini series, we will be discussing the case of Amena, Amema Nelson. Was she a cold hearted killer? Or did she have rather wife syndrome? Well, Nelson was an Egyptian model, American model, who was convicted of murdering her 56 year old husband, Bill Nelson. Her case did make international headlines due to allegation, but allegations of bondage, sex, decapitation, castration, cannibalism. So, in 1993, when authorities compare you, compare her to the real life Campbell Jeffrey Dahmer and the fictional Campbell Hamill Lecter, that's pretty notorious. I think you you really disadmit your way in history by doing that, honestly. <laughs> um. But, the criminal defendant was made was more notorious in the early 1990s than that of um, than that of Amina Nelson, which I'm going to go by her last name. This makes it sound so much easier. Um, who was a 24 year old Egyptian nanny and model. On Thanksgiving weekend 1991, she bludgeoned her her pilot husband Wilson, William Nelson. Her much older, he was much older. He was about, in, he was in his fifties to be exact. Um, she married him after a four weeks courtship, in their co- in their um. And she murdered him in their co- Costa Mesa apartment. There she skinned his torso, cooked it the cafe head, and fried the hands in oil. She was arrested and stuffed. Some of her husband's wife parts into garbage bags and offered her friend seventy five dollars thousand dollars to her disposal. Nelson contended that her husband would beat and rape her regularly, and she said that she killed him after a particular brutal assault. A psychologist testified that she suffered from post traumatic stress disorder when she was psych- when she was psychotic. She was convicted of second degree murder on January 1991, sentenced to 28 years to life. And after killing her husband to death on Thanksgiving 1991, she would butcher his body. Yeah. She immigrated to the U.S. when she was 18. But a few years later, she would be embroiled in a bizarre and gruesome criminal trial. And this led her to the comparisons, as I said earlier. But in the reasons for these, well, she had been accused of bludgeoning her husband at one mo- only one uh, husband of only one month to death before chopping his body, cutting his head, and frying his hands in oil. Yeah, the twenty-three-year-old said he the new groom had sexually assaulted her, and ki- and she killed him in self-defense. The prosecutor said that she was part. Of this was part of a plot to rob her husband, fleeing with Nelson's um, reported history, fitting with her reported history of conning older men to use sex. So what really happened? Well, she was born in Egypt in 1968 and grew up in Car- Cairo. She also, as a child, she would claim she was subject to abuse by f- and female gen- genital mutilation. In 1986, 
She came to the U.S., where she found work as a nanny and model in California, and according to the L.A. Times, she was a beauty with cut glass cheekbones, and she met Bill Nelson in 1991 at a bar playing pool. He used to be a pilot, but in 1984 he was convicted of smuggling marijuana, and after serving a four-year prison sentence in federal prison, he was released on parole, got a job at a mortgage company, and the prosecutors later said that their meeting had allegedly begun using the beauty to get several older men to lavish her with money and paying her rent and buying her cars. After knowing each other for just a few days, they got married. Bill 50, was 56, and she, so he was 33 years her senior. That's the sick, sick part right there. Um, President Bill's company would go on to say that they were really quiet, mysterious people. And she would tell the Los Angeles Times in 1991 that Bill had met them and all of a sudden they were married. So according to acquaintances, the couple spent their honeymoon visiting his relatives in Texas and Arkansas. But the honeymoon phase didn't last. Nelson said once they were married, she, he started be showing his violent side, physically and sexually abusing her during their short union. She would also go on to claim that on Thanksgiving weekend, 1991, he sexually assaulted her in their Costa Mesa, the California apartment, where she claimed to, that he had raped and then strangled her. She grabbed a lamp, hit him in self-defense, before stabbing him with scissors and killing him. But the dramatic evening didn't end there. She would then cut him up. I'm not going into all the details, but you know. Yeah. She even castrated him as a revenge for assault. Like, oh my gosh. Like, so the question is, I want to know in the comment section, do you think she was a cold-hearted murderer? Or did she have bad ride syndrome? So, well, let's go on and see. If I didn't defend my life, I would have been dead. And I'm sorry if it happened, but I'm glad that I lived. She said later, adding, I'm sorry if I dismembered him. I honestly don't know what to think of this. I really don't. In one court report, a psychiatrist testified that she told him that she had put on red shoes, a red hat, and red lipstick before preparing her husband. The psychiatrist testified that Nelson initially told him she had eaten her husband's ribs, but later denied it. She repeatedly said that after preparing his ribs for barbecue sauce, like I'm in a restaurant, it was so sweet. I still don't get why someone could do that, but, uh, anyway. That weekend, she mixed her husband's remains with leftovers, Thanksgiving turkey, and she disposed of them, and she set cut in the garbage can, and wrapping the remaining body parts in newspapers and putting them in the trash bags. Then she drove to her friend's house, showed her the trash bag stuffed in the back of his 1975 Corvette. She allegedly offered to pay $75,000 to help dispose of it. The friend immediately reported this and had called the police. Authorities sorted the bag through the bag in the car, and as Nelson looked down quietly, because the body was so dismembered, the police couldn't identify the man's remains. And they couldn't determine the cause of death due to the body's condition. The police detained her for questioning, which lasted all Sunday. And Bill was reported missing after he didn't show up to work on Monday following the Thanksgiving holiday. And Swanson told police that that last time she saw him was just before the Wednesday, after a long before a long weekend. So police searched for Nelson's apartment and found more bags containing body parts inside. Um, and so, Randall Pulaski, the Orange County Sheriff, County, the, the Orange County Deputy DA was the, at the apartment that day. And he would go and sit at, and he would go and see suitcases and dark liquid and body parts. 
yeah, I can't go into full detail, guys. I really can't. But much of his body was missing, and during the trial, he was described at about 130 pounds. And were missing. That's the thing, though. Like, what led her, guys? I just really want to know. Like, what leads people to kill? Money? Motive? Money? What? So, in December 1992, the trial would begin, and there was a dis no dispute that she killed him. Still, her attorney said that she had acted in self-defense. After her husband had attempted to rape her that night, Mooney also said that Nelson had been involved in other abusive relationships, and as a result, it had been over suffering from a battered wife syndrome, battered woman syndrome, and this condition took a psychological toll on her, ultimately leading her to that killing in 1991. She, she told authorities that she had a severe stress because her husband was physically and sexually abusive. She was given a psychological evaluation, revealing that she suffered from PTSD. The prosecution, on the other hand, said that Nelson had other motives. They believed she was plotting to steal from her husband. And that she had a history of using her sexuality to older men for their money. So, by January 9, 1993... She was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to 28 years in to life. So, what about her attempts at parole? Well, she was first eligible for parole in 2006, but was denied um, as she was found to be unpredictable threat to public safety. She remarried while in prison, this time to a man in her 70s who died before her second bid for parole in 2011. Okay, what is with people who marry in prison? Seriously? That should, oh, that's a good video. I got, you guys know the rabbit hole that led to one video that, if you go back and watch the IQs of 10 serial killers, you would know the rabbit hole that led to that video. Anyway. So, at a parole hearing, after five and a half hours, um, she was denied once again. In this hearing, it was reported that she said that she was a changed person who looked for love in all the wrong places, but now I have a strong desire to help others. So, she denied eating her husband. Like, seriously. But the commissioner asked her what was her purpose for cooking him. She refused the answer, and she isn't eligible for parole until 2026. And after learning about Nelson, um, like, I'm sh like, how did I not hear about this case? But, then again, it was before my time, but still. Um, but anyway, I love true crime. That's it for today's episode. Y'all have a happy Thanksgiving and a safe turkey day. And enjoy time with your families.